you very much. Uh, mahalo anui loa. I'm Rick, uh, Senator Brickwood Galateria, and mahalo for inviting me here today to share some manao uh, that I hope helps uh, strengthen relationships between Native Hawaiian organizations and policymakers like myself. I'll just share, share some reflections as we make our way through these next few minutes. Sylvia, how are you there? Uh, very pleased to be a part of this uh, this conference here today, and to be a part of uh, such a distinguished guest of speakers here. Aloha kamaki, aloha to you too. Uh, I re represent the newly reapportioned district, Senate District 12. As you know, it's, it was uh, quite an election, it took a lot of oxygen out of the room, and I'm so glad it is pow, and now we can assume the positions, shall we say. Uh, the Senate District I, I represent includes Kakako, Ala Moana, Waikiki, Makali, and Mo'ili'ili. Ili. So it, it is the urban core uh, of Honolulu. And so uh, I'm here today to share some thoughts and share with you what's going on at the state capitol right now. So I feel it's probably apropos to give you a Senate update. Obviously, uh, we don't have the leadership challenges that our colleagues across the way in the House do. Uh, we organized, we wasted no time in organizing our state senate, returning uh, Senate President Shan Sui of Maui to preside over the body. Vice President is uh, Senator Donna Mercado Kim, and I've been asked by my colleagues to again serve as the majority leader, and as such, I'm called upon to advance the majority package, which we're discussing right now, which has some very vital Native Hawaiian issues as well, and uh, when needed, to urge my colleagues, discipline them as well on votes that are deemed crucial to the Senate leadership. So we continue moving towards the first year of a biennium. For those of you who do understand legislative uh, protocols, we go in two-year shifts. So the biennium of the 27th legislature begins on January 16th, uh, coming up. We will. I guess uh, be begin our legislature with what we started our last two years with, three overarching themes of legislation uh, which advances the quality of life for our Hawaii. That would be job creation and creating a sustainable economy, which means not only creating but restoring jobs that we lost over the last four years in the recession. We'll continue to inject dollars into the economy and invest in our infrastructure with capital improvement projects that will affect each and every one of your communities, repair and maintenance backlog of state facilities as well, and accelerate the pace of modernization projects such as airports and harbors and such. In supporting people and children, this is the second of our three themes. Uh, we will strengthen the social safety net, obviously decimated by the recession, and hit the basic needs, food, shelter, health care, public safety, and education. We'll continue retooling our government so that we can have better access, a smarter government taking down the, the silos between our agencies. We have a CIO, a corporate information officer on the state level now, who will put every, hopefully, all of the agencies online for a better transparency for the, for the constituency. And we're looking forward to that uh, in the next uh, two or three years will actually be a much more effective government. So this is the building blocks of the last biennium, and we plan on continuing them for the next two. I'll also continue, not only as majority leader, but chair of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee in the State Senate. The, the purview of the committee, as you well know, includes all matters addressing sovereignty and self-governance, including burial councils, including the Office of Hawaiian Affairs functionality as both a quasi-autonomous agency of the state government and as a trust. And we also oversee the DHHL and its administration of the Federal Land Trust created by the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act uh, of 1920. Now these past several years, and many of you folks did make your way to the uh, state capitol, we, we've uh, advanced some land, landmark legislation, and certainly in my opinion, uh, whose sheer weight mirrors the historic right to sue 
and the gathering rights legislation several decades ago. Obviously, the one with the most weight that we talk about the most these days is Act uh, 195, which recognizes Native Hawaiians as the Maoli, people of Hawaii, duh. I can't believe, that's such a no-brainer. But in, in our search for this particular quote in statute, there were reasonable influence, inferences that Maoli was the native peoples of Hawaii, but nothing actually in the law. So we needed to put it in the law. Secondly, over the executive's signature, uh, secondly, it brings to us a clear call for action toward a, uh, creating a governing entity. And that's where our former governor, John Waihei, leads the commission of Kana'i Olovalu, which is uh, going to be the official registry that the state will receive, and from there we will enact a labeling legislation towards perhaps a, a convention of some type. Now, we all know that there is obviously a Native Hawaiian convention that's happened already, so we may not have to reinvent the wheel. But I think it's premature at this particular point to say what any model will look like. Premature but we're gonna be talking it through. So I say that everything will arrive sooner than later. So at this particular point, we're gonna be talking it through. Another uh, landmark piece of legislation that we addressed is the issue of the back rent of ceded lands. And so having said that, we resolved what the state owes the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for its use of public land trusts. It's been an elusive issue for decades and the measure involves disputed claims and conveys nine virtually continuous parcels, contiguous parcels rather, of land in the Kakako Makai area uh, to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. They received it in July of this past year, and it's a $200 million settlement. Uh, it represents a reasonable compromise according to OHA and the state of Hawaii, and the rents and lease from lands conveyed under Act 15 codifies uh, the agreement between the state and OHA. So all claims between 78 and 2012 now cease, but this, it was very clear that we are not going to preempt any claims going forward between Native Hawaiians and the state of Hawaii. In addition to that, we always try and put our Native Hawaiian poli uh, practices into policy so, as an example, Act 288 establishes the Ahamoku Advisory Committee. Within the DLNR, this advises the chairperson on integrating indigenous resource management. So that's the type of things we like to do, or we try and do over the past several years. For today, I believe this conference speaks to, unless I'm wrong, building Native Hawaiian political mana developing Native Hawaiian political leadership, and ensuring Native Hawaiian values in governance. So I'd like to share some thoughts here about that, that notion. So let's examine how far we've come as Hawaii's first stewards. Uh, we have a tremendous economic capacity. And uh, how do I know that? Uh, it's because Bumpy has been trying to make a bank, a Native Hawaiian bank for years now. I think that's a great idea, by the way. We have tremendous economic capacity, the major and our major players in shaping of Hawaii's economy. Some of, some of us may not think so. Personally, you cannot deny the fact that we've already achieved economic sovereignty. If we're to tally up the lands and the, and the cash assets under the direct control of Hawaiian institutions, we have a staggering economic capacity. Major players, Kamehameha Schools, Queen Liliuokalani, Queen Emma, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, to name a few. Then there are the millions of dollars of federal entitlement programs that continue to accrue to the Hawaiian community. Although there will always be those who challenge and, and the challenge the constitutionality of and the need for Hawaiian uh, government-sponsored entitlement programs, we simply view this as justice in reconciliation. The uh, collective wealth of these Hawaiian institu institutions you're looking at hundreds of thousands of acres in fee, as well as billions of dollars in cash, and we recognize Hawaiians now as the single wealthiest ethnic group in history. 
in the history of Hawaii. Through that lens, we're already a nation economically. And by the way, governments come and go, nations remain. Conversely, we haven't developed uh, a unified, recognized political lever, political sovereignty, if you will. Although Act 195 seeks to address a great portion of this deficiency, the two combined, political and economic sovereignty, by the way, would effectively, in a sense, overthrow the overthrow. Our political future and relevance in the life of Hawaii's governance will largely be determined by our ability to mobilize the Native community in one voice into political action by developing a blueprint over the next 50 years, not over the next five. I would say over the next 50 years that creates and maintains political strength, influences and infuses Native Hawaiian values into every aspect of government, governance, like Ahamoku Bill. Number two, we need in a sense to identify and support, mentor Native Hawaiians with political potential and prepare them for placement and advancement, not only in elected office, because there's only 76 of us, but also in every aspect of governance, whether it be co com committee clerks, like Davis Price is my committee clerk for the Native Hawaiian Affairs, or perhaps office managers, uh, anybody who influences uh, governance. And then finally, like OHA is doing, identify and support ongoing community organizing programs for civic engagement. And I would like to say that this is not an academic exercise. We are in real time. So the sooner we get together, talk it through, decide, discern, distill, and decide, the quicker the better. Insight and long range and short range political strategy and let us be clear that every action we take has a political consequence. So let's be skillful and disciplined about how we go forth. We have six Native Hawaiian senators now. Let's use that strength at least in our body. Finally, I'm very pleased, and I'm almost Paul, thank you very much, I'm very pleased to share with you that the state of Hawaii will bestow the very first Aloha Order of Merit to its very first recipient this January. The Aloha Order of Merit was established in 1993 to honor individuals who have achieved national or international recognition in their fields, devoted his or her efforts to the betterment of the state, and provided extraordinary service or brought honor to Hawaii and whose actions embody the concept of Aloha. Guess who's going to receive this? Uh, the state has never given this award to anybody up to now. And so we're happy to announce that the bar has been set for such an honor. The state legislature has approved the selection of our beloved Daniel Kahikina Akaka, who will receive the nation's first Native Hawaiian Aloha Order of Merit. And uh, you will be notified as to when that's going to happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, mahalo anuilo for this time. I appreciate bringing you greetings from the state capital. Mahalo anuilo, holomua.